The next most important duty in Islam is called zakat, or the poor due. Muslims donate 2.5% of their excess wealth each year to the needy and less fortunate. The mosque has traditionally been the hub of this charitable activity. The purpose behind zakat is to purify one's wealth, which Muslims believe comes from God. It provides Muslims with uh, a rationale for social concern, not only a rationale for social concern, but a rationale for why this isn't just something that is sort of voluntary charitable, but rather that it is expected. It, it's an obligation that one has to to, to pay to God. Uh, it's not something that one should just feel, well, I'm just being, a, I'm choosing to be a good person. It, it, it's rather the sense that I, I belong to this kind of holistic, integrated community, and I, and I have uh, an obligation before God to respond to others within that community. Well, that's exactly what zakat is. It is saying everybody do their little share and look at how incredible and synergistic the power of that little share that you are doing when it is compiled with all of these millions of human beings. The World Bank states if 2.5% of the world's grain was put in a repository and then redistributed amongst the poor, there would be no starving people in the world. The Islamic tax of grain is 5%. And 10% if you didn't use irrigation but rain. Just the tax of grain, if that was implemented, we would not have conditions like Somalia, we would not have conditions like Ethiopia, we would not have a situation where 40,000 people die every day of hunger. The third most important duty for a Muslim is to fast from dawn to dusk during the month of Ramadan, the ninth month of the Islamic calendar. Again, what they do is reinforce the sense of community, the sense of community experience because the fast of Ramadan takes place at the same time for all Muslims. And therefore, it's something that worldwide Muslims do. There are many benefits from fasting. The most obvious benefit is that one literally learns to restrain his passions. Hunger is a source of human uh, passion. If we learn to discipline ourselves in those things, we can discipline ourselves in big things. The idea of, as a unifying factor, one, it unifies us with poor people. You can pity a poor person, but you don't empathize with them until you have experienced what they've experienced. So the fasting unifies you with people that are less uh, off, uh, well off than you are. And that encourages you to want to help those people. And people that look at uh, fasting from the outside often ex think of it as, why would you want to give up food for that period of time? Fasting is a time in the Muslim world that, that everybody hates when it ends. So a lot of people don't like it when it begins. But then after a few days, they, never, they don't want it to end because it's such an extraordinary experience and people can only uh, enjoy that if they've experienced it. The most awe-inspiring of a Muslim's duties is the Hajj, or pilgrimage to Mecca. Each year, over two million Muslims from around the world gather to worship God as a single soul. Here, even our... Just seeing people from all over the world, from Africa, Asia, America, England, from, from all over the world coming together for one purpose, this is to repent and to glorify Allah. And now just to see millions of people going towards the same direction. If you're rich, your money cannot really help you. You know, you have to be you have to humble yourself and also it teaches you patience. You see people that sleep very little. They pray almost all night. You tell off when they're on the Kaaba. You see people crying, very emotional. There's no way uh, I can describe it. You just have to experience it. And I was fortunate and blessed to be able to go and experience that. Pilgrimage time is a time to really both remember and reclaim the great events of Islam, the great founding events of Islam. And, and the simple fact of it is that the, the act of pilgrimage, when you have some two million people uh, engaging, and it certainly reinforces this, this sense of people of different color, coming from all kinds of backgrounds, different social classes, and here that underlying unity, let alone the fact that Muslims worldwide are conscious of the pilgrimage at that time and reflect and, as it were, plug into that experience. 
it goes hand in hand. Your five pillars and the accountability, it, it has to be together. You can't be just praying and not feeling the responsibility that you have out in the world to, to your fellow human being, whether he's a Muslim or a non-Muslim. It's built into Islam that one must always remember God and that, yes, you will be called to account on the Day of Judgment and your deeds will be put forth in front of you and you will not be able to speak in behalf of those deeds or defend yourself, that all those things are going to be shown to you like a video camera. So a, a Muslim will strive all of his life to get in as many good deeds as he can to, to avoid any, anything that might lead him into bad deeds so that he has a good account to show God on the Day of Judgment. We are talking about the religion not founded by Muhammad, peace be upon him, but the religion that includes all of the prophets, all of those who taught the, the, the belief in one God. And that would include Adam, Noah, Moses, Jesus, Jacob, and all of the prophets, peace be upon them all. I think that Islam brings to bear, on the one hand, a set of values, many of which are similar to the Judeo-Christian, but I think there are points of, of emphases that I think are very important to see in the Islamic tradition and, and that can contribute. Well, we know Islam is a solution to all the problems in this country, to the, day, to the, to the, to the youths and also to the adults, to the parents. That uh, everybody have their, uh, they have a role to play. That's the beauty of Islam. Everybody, individual, have their own role to play. The parents have to play their role, so are the, are the, are the children. If you look at the Muslim world, there are problems. There are many things that are not according to what Islam is really based upon. But the unfortunate reality is we are being stereotyped. The wrong aspects of the Muslim world are being highlighted. And I think it's time for us to really come together and to break down that stereotype and to really look to the depth of what Islam is. I believe if we can focus upon the positive aspects of all societies and look at Islam as a way of life that is growing, that is in all parts of the world, that has a lot to contribute, then we can leave this and say, I'm glad I've met somebody and I've learned something new today.